You recognize that music if you're a fan of the Sunrise Show, and that means that Rod Hill is on the road this morning. We already checked in once with Rod there in Baker City. We're going back there right now. So, Rod, I know this is a, uh, a live report that you've really been working on for years. I mean, you've talked for years about going live from Baker City, and here we are. <laughs> Kind of my dream, right? Because we've been to the coast, we've been down to Albany, we've been up to Longview, we've been out to the Dalles, but we've never gone farther east. So yeah, we arrived yesterday morning, uh, shot until about four in the afternoon. We're gonna have that story coming up um, in a couple of weeks on Sunrise, and we'll be excited to bring that to you. So where I'm sitting right now, again, let's go back in time to the 1800s, the early 1900s. This would have been gentlemen sitting, smoking cigars, playing poker. Poker. Today, it's their absolutely beautiful dining room, and I will tell you, the Geyser Grand has a reputation for their food being absolutely outstanding. In fact, kind of a salute to history, when this was one of the finest hotels in all of the West, they used to fly in lobsters for their guests. So they do that at least a couple of times a year now. I think they have these special lobster dinners where they fly it in from Maine. That's incredible. Eric's showing you the gorgeous architecture here in what is now the, the main dining room. You can see the walk around uh, upstairs and Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> you know, I wanted to do Rod this as a <laughs> salute oh, nice. to you, Drew Carney. <laughs> I got a <laughs> I gotta tell you though, I'm hot. Don't, don't freak out. I have, I'm fully clothed underneath, okay? <laughs> Barbara Sidway, by the way, uh, her and her husband responsible for restoring this gym that at one point was gonna be just torn down. Yes, demolition order had been issued by the city and the downtown community said, no, we need to save this. And they talked us into coming here and doing it. So we're glad it was, we did. It was shut down for what, the latter 60s into the 90s and then you did the work and it reopened. Correct. Yeah. So um, you were telling me earlier, I said, Barbara, you got a minute. What do you want to talk about? And, and you gave me a topic that I wasn't expecting, but go ahead and share it with me. We're really proud that we can welcome the public in many ways into this special place. We have tours every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday by our hotel historian. And we have dinner every night, seven nights a week, and overnight rooms. The, uh, and when you walk in, it's gorgeous. And the, the restaurant's open seven days a week. I mean, yes. everything's functioning. Mm -hmm. And I yes. love, you were telling me, I ask, and you were proud to tell me this has been a business success story. I mean, people are using the hotel. I can see it's great and the history is bright. Yes, <clears throat> we're very happy that we did this and we're actually expanding with another uh, dozen and a half uh, jacuzzi suites next door in a, in a historic building. Oh my goodness. Building. Mm -hmm. Eric has zoomed in on this goofy photo. It's a goofy story, ladies and gentlemen, but it's interesting. It's history. So, Barbara, give us like the 15, 20 seconds uh, rundown of what we're looking at in this photo. This gentleman is deceased in the photo. Those are his funeral flowers. In the very early first decade of the 20th century, this was a thing, kind of like Weekend at Bernie's. The movie, yes. Yes, and so <laughs> you had your deceased friend and you had a party with him present. It's crazy, that's obvious, you can recognize the woodwork, that's here in the hotel. They have, you mentioned tours, and they have these historic photos, which I love this sort of thing, sprinkled th throughout the hotel. Again, so much history here. There was that room that Eric showed you earlier in the show that we called the, the library. Um, there was a point where salesmen could rent that room for $1 one dollar and they would set up their trunks and then they would spend the night sleeping with their belongings that they were selling to people uh, of course uh, rooms today not crazy expensive but they are more than a dollar okay <laughs> he is at sweet wife baking and rodney have you been able to dive into some of those delicious yes. treats brenda I'm too busy talking and chatting with people, to be honest. <laughs> but I will. I will. Here's a, here's a one more look. This evidently is a hands-down favorite bakery. They call it Sweet Wife Baking is the name here on Main Street in Baker City. We had a lot of people on social media rave about this place. And we turn out. Hey, guys, we're back live on TV. Hello. I, I asked earlier, I said, a lot of folks, raise your hand if you were born here or you've been here since you were a kid. Most of your life you've been here. So a lot of you, including Tyler. And then Beverly says, I chose to be here. You moved here in your 30s. I did. Where'd you move from? From McMinnville. 
Really? Yep. Beautiful wine country out there. And I have a wine shop in Eastern Oregon, so there was a need. I saw a need, and that's one thing about Baker City, is you can do whatever your passion is. You can come here and you can build a business. We have a vibrant downtown with lots of independent businesses. We have an incredible outdoor recreation opportunity. I mean, the mayor? She's talking like she's the president of the Chamber for, of Commerce. <laughs> former mayor. A former mayor. Okay, I knew there was something there. But, but uh, seriously, what do you love most about living here? My neighbors, downtown and in my neighborhood. You know people when you live here. You know who, you, you know the people next door. You know the little old lady around the block and you make sure everything's okay there. It's a real town. Is anybody a little old lady? I don't think so. I don't see no little old ladies in here. We got a bunch of young, vibrant people. <laughs> yeah, we went to your place yesterday, Barley Browns. Yeah. Great beer. We really enjoyed it. Thank you. How long you, you had your establishment there? 25 years. Oh, 20, a long time. Yeah. And we, we can get your beer in Portland, right? Don't you, you can. Distribute it? Yeah. Let yeah. you know where we can get it there? You can get it pretty much anywhere on, on draft. We're draft only. Okay. Yeah. Well, we've been having fun with the locals this morning. So good morning, guys. Good morning. Whoa, who do we have? You are. I'm Angela. You just moved from L.A. in the last year. I did. I did. I wanted to move to a small town, and I'm so grateful I found Baker City. Do you miss having, I don't know, a million people around you all the time? <laughs> I had to ask. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. What's your name? My name's Mary. And Mary, how long have you been here in Baker City? We've been here 10 years. And what do you love about it? I love the community, the active art scene, um, uh, people that are willing to jump in and help with their community, their friends, uh, art projects, uh, our cohesiveness, really. I love that. What's your name, dear? Anne. Anne, how long have you lived here? 22 years. 22 years. I, let me tell you, one thing I found is that some of the merchants were telling me that this is becoming an increasing tourism stop for people coming in, from Boise and Washington State in particular. Have you noticed that yourself? Don't tell anybody. Don't tell. <laughs> Darn, those, those TV people ruin everything. One thing you love the most about Baker City? The people. Just the, the people. people. Yeah, incredible people. Yeah!